Exponential functions are used in calculating interest, um, interest uh, in different instances. In this particular class, what we're going to talk about is whenever you take one lump sum of money, you deposit it into some type of account, and you let it sit there for a certain amount of time. You don't add nothing to it. You don't take nothing away from it. In that case, you can use what's called compound interest. What I have up here is the compound interest formula. And so what we need to know is what each of these letters stand for. And so this capital A here stands for the future amount. That's how much the money will be worth after a certain amount of time. This P is the principal or also what we call the initial amount. That's how much you're going to originally take and invest and, and deposit. N is what we call the number of compound periods. I'm going to come back and talk a little bit more about N in a minute. So we're just going to leave that there for now. R is the interest rate. And you always have to convert your interest rate to a decimal. So you always have to take the percentage and convert it to a decimal. And then T is going to be your time in years. All right. So back to the number of compound periods. So uh, financial institutions put at interest to your account at a certain amount of time. Some, some financial institutions do it annually, some do it monthly, some do it quarterly, some do it biannually. So however often they do it, that's what your N represents. So if your institution calculates interest annually, then your N will be equal to one. That means interest is added to your account once a year. Um, if they do it core or let's say semi-annually, that means they add interest to your account twice a year. If it's quarterly, that means every three months they add interest to your account. That means you're getting interest added to your account four times a year. And then if it's monthly, it will be 12. And if it's daily, in a regular year, not a leap year, it will be 365. And so this would be your ends for the various circumstances or scenarios. And so this is a formula you want to use when you want to compound interest. And let's work some examples. Okay, for example one, we want to suppose that $5,000 is invested into an account that pays 6.5% interest annually. We want to calculate how much money will be in the account after 10 years considering that the institution compounds interest annually. Alrighty, so the first thing we need to do is figure out what were all those variables and what it is we're looking for. So we're actually looking for the future amount because we want to know how much will be in the account after 10 years. Well, P is the amount that is initially invested, which in this case is $5,000. Alrighty. R is the interest rate. So since the interest rate is 6.5%, then we need to convert that to a decimal by moving the decimal two times to the left. So like Beyonce say, to the left, to the left, everything you own in a box to the left. So you're going to move it two times to the left. And you end up with 0 0.065. So that's your R. T is how long you're going to let the money sit in the account in years, so 10 years. And then N is the number of compound periods per year. And since interest is compounded annually, in this case, your N would be 1. And so to find A, you just plug in all those numbers into your formula. So recall that your formula is P times 1 plus R over N raised to the N T. So 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.065 all over 1 raised to the 1 times 10. So when you're working these, the most challenging thing is actually putting it in the calculator. So you want to make sure you put it in the calculator correctly. Um, start with the innermost parentheses. So 0 0.065 divided by 1 is 0 0.065. Add the 1 to it. That's 1.065. So you can actually enter it in straight like this. Or you can do 1.065 raised to the 10th power times 5,000. And if you plug that in, so try to plug it in. I'm going to give you a little moment to see if you can plug it in and see if you get what I get. All right, so you should have got 
and 69 cents. Is that what you got? If not, you need to make sure that you um, put the 1.065 in parentheses and you raised it to the 10th power. If you have any questions about entering this in your calculator, make sure you put them in the comments below. For example two, we're gonna take the same scenario we had in example one, except we're gonna change one thing. This time, what if interest is compounded quarterly? So we're still gonna invest $5,000 at 6.5% interest. We're gonna let it sit in there for 10 years, but this time our financial institution actually calculates interest every three months. So we have our same value, P is still 5,000, R is still 0 0.065, T is still 10, but this time N is going to be equal to 4 because interest is compounded quarterly. So we're going to plug those values in. So recall that our formula is P times 1 plus R over N raised to the N times T. So we're going to plug those numbers in the formula. So A is equal to 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.065 all over 4 raised to the 4 times 10. So once again, it's going to be a matter of making sure you plug this in the calculator correctly. So you can plug it in just like this or you could take it one step at a time. Now if you do one step at a time, make sure you do not round until you get to the very end. So we're talking about money here. So you don't want to short people of their money. So you want to make sure you don't have any rounded error. So keep all of your numbers until you get to the very end. Once you get to the very end, then you want to round it to the nearest cent. Okay, so if you perform the calculations inside the parentheses, you get 0 0.01625 raised to the 4 times 10 is 40. Plug this in and see what you get. You should actually get $9,527.79. Did you get that right? Hopefully you got it right. If not, go back and plug it in again. See if you can get it. If you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments. And I will respond. I will. If you compare this solution with the solution we got in example one, remember it's the same scenario, except in this case, interest was compounded more frequently. You'll notice that this one came out more. This one was 9,500 and something. The last one was 9,000. 300 and something and so one thing you can take away from this is that the more often that the interest is compounded by the institution the more money you get and so there's another scenario where your money can be compounded continuously and so there's a different formula for continuous compounding so let's talk about that formula so here's the formula for continuous compounding a equal p times e raised to the rt these are the same variables in the last formula a is still your future amount P is still your principal amount, R is still the interest rate, and T is still time. Except you use this formula when it is continuous compounding. Notice there is no N in this formula because N was the number of times that your money was compounding interest each year. But in this case, it's continuous, so there is no N. So this time, we're going to do example three. We're going to use the same scenario we use in examples one and two. We're investing $5,000 six and a half percent interest and this time we're going to leave it in there for 10 years but our money is going to be compounded continuously so now let's figure out how much we will have at the end of the 10th year so our p is still 5,000 our r is still 0 0.065 and our t is still 10 and so again it's going to be a matter of plugging in the calculator and making sure you plug it in right so remember there's the e to the x button so make sure you find that e to the x button on your calculator and plug in e and in parentheses put 0 0.065 times 10 and close the parentheses and multiply that by 5,000 and see what you get. So you should have got $9,577.70 and if you compare this to the last solution which was compounded quarterly this is even more than what we got when compounded quarterly. So continuous compounding will always give you the greatest value of the different compounding scenarios that we've talked about. Um, but I don't know of many financial institutions that actually compound continuously. So if you know one, let, put it in the comments, let me know. I don't know of any. But this is the formula that you use. So if you have any questions whatsoever, 
make sure you include them in the comments if this video helped you make sure you hit the like button and if you haven't already i'm sure you have because you've been watching my videos but if you haven't go ahead and hit that subscribe button and until next time i'll see you in the next video